of all the questions I'm asked, there's one question which is a runaway winner. I'm probably asked this question hmm, every two out of three drawing videos I do, and I will answer it at the end, but I want to actually replace it with what I think is a more helpful way to ask this question, to give the result that I think the question is really hoping to get. And that is the answer that's going to help progress our drawing learning and improvement as quickly and as effectively as possible. So the question I'm most often asked is this, what pens do you use? Have you ever asked me that? I do use one brand. It's not because I'm sponsored. It's not because I get paid money to do it or to mention it. It's simply because this was the brand I bought when I first started to draw and I never had a problem with it. So I kept drawing with it. But I feel like the unrecognized question perhaps is the underlying issue is, if I buy the same brand as pen that you use, will that help my drawings look like yours more? Will that speed up my drawing improvement? And I honestly think that at the beginner stage of drawing, it's not going to work that way at all for you. And it can just be an unnecessary expense and pressure. I think rather, the better question to be asking is not what pen do you use, but how do I choose the best pen for where I'm at at this point in my drawing, in my learning to draw? What pen will give me the best learning experience now and in the future? So I'm not going to tell you a brand to buy, but rather give some principles to help understand the potential of the pens that we use. As I mentioned before, at the beginning stage of drawing, I don't think the brand of pen that we use actually is of much importance at all. The difference that the pen brand makes and the amount of money we spend on the pen, perhaps more significantly, is very minimal, if at all noticeable, for how our drawing looks or progresses. So many other things, I believe, are more important. But the important thing to realize is that different pens have different ink delivery systems. And this does affect the way the pen works, the way it looks, and the way it feels when we use it. Our pen may have a compressed fiber tip that the ink flows through. It may have a mechanical bore point that revolves on the paper and the ink flows around. It may have a steel nib, but even the shape of that nib, whether it's a point or it's a broad flat end, will have a huge impact on the lines, the marks that we can make with it, how they will look. And it certainly can be helpful at the very start to buy two or three pens that work in a very different way to feel how they feel in our hand on the paper that we're using. But when it comes down to choosing one to use, I think at the start, there's one underlying principle that's so important, which is choose the pen that you can most easily find, buy, and afford to replace. Basically, the best pen to use is the one that you can afford to waste, that you can be extravagant in your drawing, that you can pick it up and draw without a thought for the cost of the pen or how long it might last for. The best pen's going to be the one that you can buy a whole lot of at once and stash them all around the place so that whenever the time and the urge and the opportunity comes to draw, you can grab a pen easily and spend a few minutes exploring the art. Not just can you afford to waste them and be extravagant with them, but you don't have to use them till their last gasp when it's impossible to get any ink out of them. Because pens do have a wind down period where the nib's not working as well, the ink's not flowing as well, and the ink pressure isn't as great. And all of these things do start to affect the sorts of marks we make with them. So if I need a nice fresh pen for the effect I'm trying to create in my drawing, it's great to be able to always afford to pick up a nice fresh pen. And of course, it's exactly the same with the paper that we buy. Paper can be very expensive and nothing will inhibit my learning journey than being afraid of wasting the paper because I bought such high quality paper. I'm so aware of the price of every sheet that I'm more concerned with not wasting it than with learning to draw. And if I'm afraid of wasting my supplies because I've paid so much money 
for top quality ones, hoping that will improve the look of my drawings, then not just will it stop me experimenting and learning and doing the sheer volume of drawing that I need to do, but it may also feed into perfectionism, which if that's at all an issue, is a good thing to try and stay well away from. But there's another important principle besides choosing a brand that I can easily afford, can even in fact afford to waste. And that's once I've experimented with perhaps a few different brands, a few different types of pen, and there's one that I feel just perhaps suits me for what I'm trying to do a little bit better than others, and one that I can easily afford, I need to stick with that brand. Choose that brand, that type of pen, over and over and over again, in this first period when I'm starting to learn to draw. Because different brands do have different ways of working. They do have different ink delivery systems, they use different inks, they're different sizes, the barrels are different proportions, they're weighted differently and they feel different in our hand. Even whether we put the cap on the end, if that's possible or not, can affect how a pen feels. And a great friend in learning anything is consistency. If every time I draw, I'm using the same pen, the same brand of pen, the same shape and weight of pen, then I can start to learn, start to perceive the different possibilities of this pen according to how I hold it, how I move it, the speed with which I move it. I start to learn how all of these things affect the marks that appear on the paper. What I want to do is make all the variables the things that I'm doing because then I can learn to control these. I can start to learn, either consciously or even unconsciously, the ways to manipulate this pen to create a great range of effects, which then I can start to choose deliberately in the creating of the effect in my drawing that I want. But if every time I draw, I just pick up any brand, all these things change all the time, and I don't get to learn, and the difference in the marks that they each make, make it harder for me to appreciate, to understand, to learn, and to therefore come to control the things that are totally within my domain and the things that relate to that particular brand of pen that are different with a different brand of pen. And this will certainly slow down my ability to create deliberate effects in my drawings. If I stay with the one brand, the one type of pen even within that brand, I can really come to appreciate the nuance, the possibilities for that pen. How things change in the marks on the paper when I hold the pen upright, when I hold the pen at an angle, when I hold the pen at an extreme angle, when I hold the pen right at the nib, when I hold the pen right back. When I use a pen that's brand new or when I use a pen that is in the second half or even further along of its drawing life. How the speed with which I make my lines, make my marks, affects the way they look. All of these things I can come to understand if I have the consistency of using the same brand and the same type of pen within that brand for every drawing for an extended period of time. You may have heard me talk about going deep when we learn, not to scatter our learning across too wide an area. Usually I'm talking about drawing as opposed to drawing with pen, drawing with pencil, drawing with watercolour, drawing with pastel, drawing with charcoal that if we go deep in one area, we learn skills that you learn about going deep, that we don't learn if we just do a little bit of paddling in lots of different areas. That only teaches us, well, how to stay shallow in lots of different areas. It's the same with our pens. We stay with one pen, we go deep with experiencing, with learning about that pen. And then at some future point, we can start to change brands, experiment with other pens that we see. See if we can create new effects with those pens, but we've learned all about to how to understand and control and create effects more rapidly, more deeply, because we've stayed with the one pen, one brand for some period of time. It speeds up the understanding and learning process regarding the materials that we draw with. And as I said before, it's exactly the same with the paper that we use. But I think for most of us, paper has the potential to be even perhaps more expensive in some ways 
than the pens. And perhaps because we observably use the paper up more quickly, more obviously, we can feel more hesitant about wasting it if we've paid a lot of money for good quality paper. It may well be for where you're at when you're starting to draw, that copy paper will be the best paper to use for all of your initial drawing because there are so many things to learn that don't really relate particularly to the quality of the paper or the type of surface. Now there are lots of things that do, but why not start concentrating on all the things where the paper makes much, much less difference so that you can just use sheet after sheet after sheet and then once some other more fundamental drawing skills are consolidated, perhaps start to move to a paper that's a little bit more expensive, but still within your budget and easily accessible and start to see how that affects what you do. So what brands do I use? I use Copic Multiliners for my drawing. In most drawings, I'm using a 0.2 and a 0.3 millimeter pen. Sometimes I'll go to a 0.1 for very fine lines I might need, or particularly if it's a larger drawing, I might use a 0.5 for the close-up parts of that drawing. But I almost never use a pen finer or wider than that. And then I use the Copic sketch markers when I want to apply some fast value. What may look like a black and white watercolor wash is actually these sketch markers quickly applied. The paper I use is an Australian brand that's put together using German paper. The brand is Art Tech. It's probably not particularly available outside of Australia, but probably the important thing to know is it's a 210 GSM drawing cartridge. It's relatively thick. It has a relatively smooth surface, but it's certainly not flat. There's just enough surface texture, I think, to allow some interesting effects with the ink. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope this has been helpful, whether you have or haven't yet asked me what pens I use, what materials I use. But I really believe the important thing when we're learning to draw is to keep it simple, buy things we can afford to use up, even waste, have all around us all the time. This will fast track our improvement far more than the relatively small difference that using expensive materials will create at the start. But in the end, whatever pen you use, whatever paper you use, however you use them, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.